worship with you all. Let's pray together. Dear Jesus, we thank you first and foremost for who you are, Lord. We thank you that you are the king above all kings and that you are our father and our friend, that you know us by name, Jesus, that you go before us and behind us and surround us on every side, Lord. And so I pray that we would worship in reverence of who you are today, that we would truly respond to who you are in our worship today, Lord, that you would have your way this Father's Day and be glorified in all that is said and done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, as the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on
So
of these students at camp come to my mind, this reckless abandon of not just saying words, but saying, Lord, I open myself, empty me to be filled with the fullness and the fire of who you are. And so Jesus, I pray for the person in this room that time and time again has asked you for this fire, has asked you to set their soul on fire, Lord, but they've continued to operate in doubt and in fear and as a result in patterns of frustration, I pray that you would reveal yourself as the fullness of who you are, including a good and kind and faithful Father. And I pray that you would just begin to fill your people with the fire of who you are, God. I pray that it would be like a fire that cannot be contained within us, that these streets, God, that this city, fire for you, Jesus. You are the hope that we need. And so I pray that we would burn in such a way, God, that we can't stop giving out the hope of who you are.
Dear Lord, help us to have a heart that is open to you and just seeking with expectation for what you truly have for us. We want more of you. Your word says, come nigh unto you and you will meet us, Lord Jesus. And Lord, as we draw near to you, as we open to you, Lord, we, we trust that, that you're going to fill us again with your spirit, guide us with your spirit, and just meet us here. Lord, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for a time of worship. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. <clears throat> Welcome to Vital Church. It's kind of fun to say that, Pastor Brian, Pastor Joy. Now, now listen, I had this really cool experience. Uh, this last couple weeks, I had an opportunity to visit the church that I grew up in. And uh, I was sitting there in a Bible study. And in the sanctuary that I was in a, a part of, at least now, wow, 30 some odd years ago since the last time I've been in the building. Uh, and the place hasn't changed one ounce. And when I was sitting here in that seat, I got to tell you, the reality is I didn't, I, I couldn't tell you a thing about the Bible study because I was just flooded with all these memories. And I would see that seat and be like, so-and-so sat there and so-and-so sat there and so-and-so sat there. And one of the people I thought about that day was Mr., he was actually a pastor, Claude Wright. And Claude Wright would start every service. I remember so vividly as a kid, he would say, welcome to, I went to Calvary Assembly of God. Welcome to Calvary Assembly of God. Ready for this? the friendliest church in town. And you know what? I really thought that was true. And I think it might have been true. So I'm, I'm going to start again. Welcome to Vital Church, the friendliest church in town. Now listen, church, that's only true if we make it true. The pastors can't do it themselves. It is every single one of us coming together and being friendly, wearing a smile, wearing joy. So let me, let me share this. My name is Scott Holman. I am a connections host here at Vital Church. And the reason you've been seeing me a little bit and you're going to see some others like me is because I am here to take a little load off the pastors and I want to help you connect here at this church. Because the church should not be a lonely place. This world should not be a lonely place. This place should be a place of community where we get to love each other and lean on each other and be live this life with each other. So I have in my hand this nice little bulletin that we call Vital News. And here's the reality. There's not much in it today. I got an easy job. But week to week, we're not going to sit there and tell you all about the announcements. We're going to ask you to look up on the screen. We're going to ask you to read this. And if you have any questions about what's going on here today, seek me out. Any week, seek me out, and there will be others. We want to help you connect here at this church. All right? Now, with that being said, let's talk about the important announcements today. First of all, inside this bulletin is a little card, and it is a connections card. If this is your first time here, we'd love for you to fill it out. And if not, and you have a prayer request or a praise report, we still want to hear from you today. Second, very important stuff, we appreciate the not only the uh, friendliness of this church, but the generosity of this church. And we just want to uh, really remind you and thank you for your generosity. And we have ways to give. It'll pop up here on the screen here. Uh, and if you don't know what a QR code is, by the way, one thing I find out in business, Pastor Brian, Pastor Joy, is we assume everybody knows. If you don't know how to work this cool little thing here, turn on the camera of your phone. Point your phone toward this right here. And as long as you're on the internet or you have LTE going, once the camera hits this, you'll get a little thing that says, hit me, and it's going to take you to a website, and it's going to take you right there to give. All right? Now, I think we got another UR code coming up because I have something really cool to announce. Thank you. We are vital. And we get to wear it, not only with our smiles, not only with the way we interact, we get to wear it literally. And so this is the pre-sale going on right now. We have shirts of all sizes, but that's not 100% true. We have shirts of all sizes for adults. 
small to XXL. So if you have a kid that wants a shirt, it's just going to be big for a little bit, but that's okay. We're building up the generations, and they're going to grow right into it, okay? So this is your way to get a shirt. They, I believe, are $22, and I don't know the full delivery yet, but I'll get that soon. But this is your way to get in early and be a part, quite literally, of Vital Church. Now, to one more announcement that's not quite as important as the other ones. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> now, I, I saw a joke this week, and, and, and I don't really know if this is true, but I think it's true, actually. And the guy was sharing, he says, you know what's interesting? Mother's Day is the second most celebrated holiday in the United States. Christmas, then Mother's Day. Jesus, then moms. <laughs> Father's Day is 16th most celebrated holiday in the United States. The 16th. So we're going to change that today. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to stand. And here's the thing I'm going to say about fathers. They are critically important. In fact, you want to change a church, change the fathers. You want to change a country, change the fathers. It starts with the men. And we are blessed here to have great men at this church. But here's something we're not good at. We're not good at telling men that they're doing a great job. We have men in here that are fathers. I want you to stand up. And maybe it's just a family thing if that's your comfort. I'm okay with that. I want you to tell a man today why he is amazing. And we have some men in here that are not fathers yet, but they're going to make amazing fathers. And I want you to tell them what you see in them. And so in today's time of friendliness, my ask, will you just tell a man how great he is today? And with that, I ask that you stand, and we're going to give you a couple minutes to do just that. Good morning, Vital Church. How are you? That's all right. Yeah, another hand for the, the new name change. Pastor's here somewhere. Uh, he's running back to get a computer. I think something crashed. So uh, here he comes. We're going to have him come to the stage. For those who don't know me, my name is Kevin. My last name is Womble. I'm one of the deacons here, and I get the privilege this morning of honoring the father of the house. Here he comes. How about a big hand for your pastor? As he gets ready, I got a couple texts yesterday uh, from you, a few pictures. You were at one of my favorite places on earth yesterday, Bass Pro Shop, and uh, so uh, I was jealous, first of all, but uh, I, mean, I want to apologize ahead of time for this is just a little kicker. This is just a little, I don't want to distract you from preaching this morning because, yes, you and I know this is the only way to eat these milk chocolate with caramel. There's no other. Amen. That's right. No matter what Pastor Joyce says. I'll put this right here. <laughs> yes. That's the inspiration. Can you, can you catch crappie with those? <laughs> yes, you can. Okay. They don't stay on the hook very well, but you can do it. Uh, to the father of the house, on behalf of the flock, I want to say thank you, sir. Thank you. You, you shepherd us well. 
through all the changes that we're experiencing for the good. I know there will be rough parts, but we have a leader that will lead us through that. He's following after Christ, and, and he's an example to us. Brother, we love you. We appreciate you. Happy Father's Thank Day you. from the flock. Thanks, Kevin. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's a, it is an honor to occupy this space. I'm very aware that many can do it, but how many of you know men, God will give men assignments? Yeah. It's also cool today as I think through this that we are for the first time under the umbrella and covering of Vital Church, um, me preaching here and my dad preaching his first Father's Day message at Vital Church in DeSoto. So I know he'll be watching later. I want to say, Dad, I love you. I appreciate your heart to step in at the season, mom and dad, and uh, champion the cause of moving the kingdom forward. How many of you are thankful to be here today? You're ready for the Lord to move in your life. I'm very thankful for a vital church. And the church shouted amen. You know, that would be a good spot there for you to help me preach this this morning. The, the church shouted amen. I'm thankful this morning that we do not just have men that show up, but we have men that show up and serve. Because it's one thing to show up. I mean, you could show up to a baseball game and watch all the stuff. You can buy the merch. You can buy the, the beverage. You can buy the nachos. But how many of you know you're not playing the game? I'm thankful for men in this house who will show up will engage in what God's called them to do. Are you thankful for a vital church with vital men this morning? So I want, to, I want to also say happy Father's Day to all of the dads. And this message that I'm getting ready to preach um, is a message that I believe is going to, in some way, via the Holy Spirit, elevate everyone in this room. When we move into a time of thematic teaching, we're going expository, we're teaching through Philippians. I'm going to move off of that today. Joy will be um, speaking next week on that subject, and I'll be sharing over at the other campuses. My parents take a weekend sabbatical. Um, let me start here this morning. Joshua, we are all right with this mic, or you want me to switch? Okay. If you agree with me, speak back to me. Preach back to me this morning if you agree with this. Man is not a noun to redefine. Man is not a noun to redefine. Man is a reality created by the divine. Amen. Man is not an a noun that we can kind of willy-nilly and make it whatever we want. I want to talk about this today. Day one, if we go back to the days of creation, let's jump back, blast to the past real quick. Day one, God creates light. How many of you are thankful for light? Day two, God created the sky. The other day, I got to just sit under the canopy of the sky. I was reading a book. It was me and the Lord, Father, Son, and Spirit, and Brian. It was amazing. Day three, God created dry land and plants. Who's thankful for vegetation? How many, how many of you dads want salad today? I, I know, I know, I know where you're at. Give me the smoked meat, you know. Day four, he creates sun, moon, and stars. Galaxy upon galaxy upon galaxy, one that you live in, the Milky Way. God, God did that on day five. He creates the water and he creates the, the sky animals. I, I, I would love if I can to just say, Lord, can, can I tap in when you did that? I don't, I don't know how they came into being, but I would just love to see there be nothing and a dove just through flight pops into the sky, a duck pop, pops into the sky, a goo, whatever it looks like. But on day five, he did that. And then day six, he creates land animals and humans who is thankful to be human today. But when we look at it and we think through this process after water, after light, after sky animals, after land animals, after vegetation, man was the very first thing after those things that he breathed the breath of life in and man became a living being. Who's thankful that you have the breath of life? In you. I know we always want to say ladies first, 
And moms, you have your day. We know that you're second in the holidays. But I want you to know this. At this moment, God's application was different. Six days of creation, we know that he rested on the seventh. But this is God's plan, not Brian's plan. He said, the first thing that I need to put in the garden, beyond the animals, beyond the skies, beyond galaxy, upon galaxy, is a man, is a male. It's the first thing that God did. Now, is this belittling, ladies? Well, not if you know the gospel of Jesus Christ. God always has a plan and a purpose for what he does. And when man touches it and manipulates it and messes with it, then that's the mess that we're in. We just live stuck. Would you agree with this today? Men walk differently. You you can talk back to me. I don't think it'll offend anyone in this room. Uh, uh, Men talk differently. How many men in this room have had to navigate the moment Your your mama and dad can't give you the exact day when it's going to happen. It might be when you're in school. It might be when you're riding the bus. It might be when you're checking out at Walmart. But that voice of yours goes squirrely on you. And what used to be more this high-pitched, tenor-sounding voice, all of a sudden for a moment in time, and you don't know exactly how that's going to work, but you hope it's going to move through quickly. You have trouble controlling that voice, and out of nowhere, at any moment, that voice can change. It's one of the incredible things about a male, about a man, that God will bring you to a point in your life where he'll even change your voice to carry upon you the order and the thing that he wants to bring out of you, who's thankful to be a man. Men act differently. Wives, don't try, to get your, don't try to get your man to act like you. That's the problem that we have today. We got men not acting like men and ladies not acting like ladies. Men are going to sound different. They're going to they're gonna walk different. They're going to talk different. How many of you know that men dress differently than you? That's just part of it. That's part of being a man. Testify to this, ladies. Men smell differently. I have four daughters and a son. Gentlemen, sometimes you stink. You're a man. You're you're different. You don't always smell floral. You don't always smell this way or that way. Men smell differently. Men process differently. We're trying to raise up a group of boys today or a group of men that process as a sex that they are not. That won't work. If you're a man, you can't process like a woman. You can't process like a female because you're not a female. God had a plan. He put men together. He knows what a man is supposed to look like. I believe this with all of my heart. We have some vital men in this church who are going to hold on to what a man is, how it's divine in Scripture, and say, God, with your help, I'm going to live this thing out, and I'm going to help my family understand how you define this from your word. Isn't it amazing that kids have to be confused by that today? I'm going to tell you, I've never been confused because God has laid out a plan. Pastor Corey Brooks was a fatherless child on the south side of Chicago. A calling, a stirring begins to happen in his heart where 80% of the homes were left fatherless. He had a mission to ease the feeling that he had as a kid, abandonment. He tells them, this is Pastor Brooks, that he loves them. He sets academic employment and behavioral expectations for them. How many of you know if you are a male, if you are a man, and if you are a father, you have a behavioral expectation in your house? There is a way you act, and there is a way that you don't act. There is a way that you treat your mother, and there is a way that you don't treat your mother. There is a way that you treat your sisters, and there is a way that you don't treat your sisters. There's a way that you treat a brother because he's your brother. 
He, he set, Pastor Corey sets behavioral standards. But most importantly, what Corey does is he lets these, women, these boys and girls know that he's always around, he's available for them, and he's present. I take some of these experts or these excerpts from Fox News. Brooke says, I really do believe one of the things that saved me in the midst of feeling abandonment and rejection from my father is the fact that I had a community center where I had the most wonderful mentors. The, the pastor said, I had an awesome elementary teacher and a father figure and mentor in my life. His name is Joe. Pastor Brooks had a vision to change the Woodlawn community. Their church sat here and across the street. There was another building. It, he, he would, and the church would take resources to help bury community members as their loved ones had passed away due to violence in the south side of Chicago area. They watched drug and prostitution activities happen across the street from the church. Pastor Corey would look out as children past going to school, walking around murder scenes that were marked off. He said enough was enough. Pastor Corey spent 94 days in 2011 and 2012 consecutively on the top of that hotel that was dilapidated. He said, I'm going to raise money needed to demolish it. This shuttered hotel, which had become a haven for gang activity, drug activity, and sex trafficking. He now has spent 11 months on top of what is known as the Rooftop Revelations facility, raising $30 million for that building that was pushed over. He said, we're going to have our community center. Because he wanted a safe place. Why did he want a safe place? Because he, because he had a Joe, Joe in his life. Why did he has a, have a Joe in his life? Because Joe decided he wasn't just going to be a boy and he wasn't just going to be a man. Joe decided, I will be a vital man. Church, there are organs that you can live with, or there are things that you can live with, and that there are things that you can live without. You have vital organs. Remove them and you die. How many of you understand that we have boys walking around today that never learn how to become a man, and if they don't run into a vital man like you, they will die without the Lord. They will die knowing that they could have done more, could have been more. God, give us vital men. I want to give you a few thoughts today. Is there a water close somewhere that I might be able to get? <clears throat> Write this down in your notes if you don't mind. Vital men reproduce vital outcomes. Vital men, is everybody getting that? Reproduce vital outcomes. Some of us understand the process of reproduction because we're like, yeah, we have kids. We know, Pastor. Let's move on. Vital men reproduce vital outcomes. Watch this. To reproduce means to produce again. How many of you know reproduction could not happen without male and female? It cannot. God shows that. He has a plan for it. Vital men reproduce vital outcomes. Reproduce means to produce again. This is exactly what Pastor Corey did. He said, I had a Joe in my life. I had some mentors in my life from this community center that loved on me, that encouraged me, that showed me the way to go. So Joe said this then I'm going to reproduce other vital students. I'm going to take people that walk down a road that I was walking down. I'm going to take young men and young women who had not in their home the representation of a male figure, a father figure to help them, and I'm going to reproduce. I'm going to produce again what I saw because somebody got in my path and said, Corey Brooks, there is another option. There is another way. How many of you know that all of us could use a Joe in our life to help us? Vital men understand this this morning, that you are made in his image. All the, all the males and females in the house, can you say, I am made in his image? 
I have three simple thoughts today. Um, None of them are thoughts that you really have to try to wrap your mind around, although you might be challenged. They're pretty simple thoughts, and I purposely, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, articulate that today. Thought number one is this. Vital men live out God's definition of a man. Vital men live out God's definition of a man. We go to Genesis chapter 1. If you'll turn there with me in your Bibles today, it will also come up on the screen for you. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. When you see it or you're there, say, Pastor, go. Okay? Then God said. Then God said. This this is what God said. Let us. I don't really know, Pastor, if there's a trinity. Oh, there's a trinity of trinities. Capital U.S., us. Father, Son, and Spirit. There they are. Then God said, let us make man in our image, in our image, capital O, our image, Father, Son, and Spirit, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping creeping things, not creepy thing, but every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Verse 27, so God created man in his own image. God created created man in his own image after the birds, after the, 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 the land animals, after the firmament, and after all the things that dwell in it, God created man, and when he chose to create man, he said, hey, I'm going to create him in whose image? My image. Some told you you look like your mom. Others told you you look like your dad. Some told you that you're a mix between the two. I'm going to tell you who you look like. You look like your creator. Vital Church, the question is this, is can you act like what you look like? Can you come into alignment and see that life is bigger than looking like the seed that created you? Life's bigger than all those things. Life's bigger than coming out of a family named Kitchen and being able to celebrate Father's Day with some barbecue Life is bigger than that. The question is, can I look like that which created me? For it's in him and through him and by him that I was created in his image, in the image of God. He created him. Here it is. If you're trying to teach your kids through the stickiness of today and you're trying to wonder how do I navigate this, You navigate it by getting their face in the text. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. There's no way around launching or relaunching how the beginning of time happened. There's no way around figuring out how you showed up today. I promise you this, there was a male and a female involved. He created male and female. When God created humans, he created both male and female. It's not a trick. It's not hard to understand. May I say this? It's been around for a while. Like from the beginning? And we just now have and are being bombarded by a new cultural doctrine I think this is the easy way to go. Just go back to the beginning. It's right here. I'm thankful for the way that God set things up from the beginning, that a male and a female have this beautiful capacity. Now, we also know that God says there's a plan in that. The best way for this to happen is through holy matrimony. Amen, church? Can I preach this morning? It is not God's plan for you to live with someone before you marry someone. It is not God's plan for you to have some warm-up round to see if you like her enough or if he likes you enough or if we can get along. I want to preach to you today, youth. I want to preach to you today, young people. That is nonsense. That is not the word of God. The, the, The Bible says that he has someone 
for you that will be a helpmate by your side. And his plan is that helpmate that will be by your side will be by your side until death removes one of you from this planet. God set this up. The process in which a male and a female could come together and and create offspring that through that offspring, and, and through that offspring, one of two things can happen. When a male and a female have a child, it will either be male or female. If you said, Pastor, I had triplets. Okay. Maybe they were two males and one female or three females. And I don't know what it was, but they were male or female because you reproduce after your kind. It's goofy, the things our world is trying to do. It's goofy through all of the intelligence that we have. We are moving away sometimes of really just being smart, biblically illiterate illiterate people or literate people. Like, God, this is what you say. If you take this and you take this, it has possibilities. They are one or the other. Why? Because that's God's plan. Touch his plan and you deal with the consequences of touching his plan. You say, but pastor, that's weighty. Pastor, that's difficult. Church, that's the gospel. The gospel is not always easy. The gospel is not a Christianity light message. The gospel works in the center of the early church in this Greek culture where there were gods, this and that. God said, don't have false idols. It works just like it did in the Old Testament where they were raising up these gods of stone to worship. God said, don't let there be idols. You know what an idol is? It is something that upstages God. Man has become one of the greatest idols that we worship. Look how smart man is. Look at what we can do. Well, anytime we are trying to change God's plan, watch out. How many of you are thankful to be made in his image? So thankful that God gives us an identity. God gives us a plan. He gives us this shell to live in. And and here's the cool thing. He knew exactly how we needed to arrive. For all of those today who God has made female, I just want to say today, we are very thankful as a church that God made you female. For all of the males, that all the men, all the boys that God made male, we are thankful that God made you a male. For you did not get to determine how you would arrive. God saw fit to have you arrive the way he wanted you to arrive because he had a plan and purpose attached to your arrival. Amen. The two of them shall come together, become one flesh, And create. Create what? They will create offspring, some of them male, some of them female. And we thank God for this activity. We thank God that God did exactly what he wanted to do. When we live by design, and this is what I encourage you with, if we take the blueprint of the Bible and we keep taking our kids back to it when they have questions, take them back to it. And when dad doesn't know, go back to scripture and start flipping through scripture. Say, I don't, we don't have this figured out yet. Let's keep wrestling with it. Let's ask some people in our lives that might be able to help us find an answer. When we live by his design, the way that God planned it, we also reap the beautiful, healthy family benefits of his plan. Amen, church? Who's happy to be reach, reaping those benefits this morning? I want to encourage some vital men today. You might be a father, you might not be a father, you might be a dad one day, you might not be a dad one day, but I encourage you, if you are a male, every male can be a vital man. You were created in his image. You say, trust me, pastor, I know all that. I'm not buying into all that jargon. Okay, 
So if you know that as a man and you're living up to scripture, then I am quite sure you have dominion. And you have walked around the boundaries that the Lord has given you. It's one thing to stay out of the cultural mandate and the thought. It's another thing to stay out of it, be be passive where the Lord said you would have dominion. So God is calling some of us to rise up beyond, trust me, pastor, I would never, and say, hey, vital men have dominion, and that dominion is always rooted if you are a vital man out of love. We here have dominion. Take dominion. I mean, I don't know about this. I don't know about what that looks like. I, some, of you are, some of you have been in a relationship. Well, he took dominion, I'll tell you that much. Well, we'll get there in just a minute, but let's look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. It said, then God blessed them. Who's thankful for the blessing of God on your marriage today? Let's go round two on that. Who's thankful for the blessing of God on your marriage today? Amen. Amen. Be fruitful and multiply. Joy and I did that. (laughs) Fill the earth and subdue it. Subdue it. Wow. How many people are walking into your world and say, subdue it, subdue it, subdue it? Subdue it, subdue it. We're not subduing, and God said to subdue. Why are we not subduing when God said to subdue? Why, why, when we've been fruitful and we've multiplied and we filled the earth, that's item number one, but you've got to subdue the thing you filled. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing, over every living thing that moves on the earth. Men, I want to say this to men, and, and it affects mankind as well, so it affects, it affects all of us, but I think there is a struggle point quite often with males. So I want to address something today, that when you understand the love of your heavenly Father, When you come to grips, and I know it's a sad thing. I've been there myself because if we would have got it at 16 and 18 and 20 and 23, but sometimes, no, we're still trying to to pursue the thing that's not necessarily God and it's not working. Watch this. When you understand the love God has for you, you can understand and walk into the realm he has called you to navigate. Have you ever had someone give you something with things attached or strings attached? Well, maybe things attached too. And they gave it to you, but they're always asking you questions about it. Like, did you want that back? Did you need to borrow that? I mean, is it really mine or did you give it, but you were wishing you didn't give it? Who's ever borrowed something before and you really need it and you don't have the ability to rent it or purchase it and you're really hoping nothing happens to it? Why? Because it's not yours. Some of us of men, as men, are walking in jurisdictions that are not ours and dominions that are not ours and we're uncomfortable and we're quirky with it because it's not where God wants you. It is amazing what happens, and I cannot tell you when this is, but it's usually not in a man's young age or in a boy's young age. I've had countless conversations where a man in his 30s, 40s, 50s, finally light bulb moment gets it. He loves me. He loves me. Some of you guys are like, I'm still trying to figure it out. Not... If I do this and I do that, he loves me. Well, if you do this and you do that, that just equals what your blessing is going to look like. Disobedience, you can't walk in disobedience to God. You cannot walk in disobedience to God and live under the blessing of God. But it doesn't change his love for you. Some of you men bumped into this concrete wall. And you're like, I'm so tired of running. And God finally says it again. I love you. And it went to your heart. And this is the first time in your life where you can have dominion. Because you understand 
that it is a heavenly father who is not trying to take it away every time you mess up and you know yourself good enough to understand the trigger and the deal when you mess up what happens and who comes against you. And for too many times in your life, you've messed up and you've wore the sting of it because mankind couldn't let go. But I'm going to tell you, when you run into the arms of Jesus, you run into this incredibly warm love that says, I know you like no one knows you. And I still love you. Now, Brian, have dominion. Vital men, they struggle. Men struggle when they don't understand the realm in which they navigate. I'm thankful today that we can have dominion. Matter of fact, I believe this. A a man is lost when he knows not his territory. Some of you guys have talked to me about it. You've talked to me about it. All of a sudden, you shoot a deer. And you're tracking it, and it went onto somebody else's property, and it says no trespassing. You, you've talked to me. It's uncomfortable to be on somebody else's property when it's not your property. Why? Because you do not have jurisdiction. God has called us to take dominion over the thing that we are called to have Dominion over. A man is confused when he doesn't see what is rightfully his. I know he'll cover that insecurity in a lot of different ways because I am a man, but he's still confused. What's mine? What, what's not mine? A man will live cautious when he doesn't really know the boundaries that he's called to step out in, a man's cautious, because I'm not saying men men won't step out of their boundaries. I'm saying they'll usually step out into a boundary and try to dominate and have dominion in spots like God's like, you're in left field. I want you in right field. We're weird like that. So we, we we try to create this subculture with God with grit and hard work and effort, and we wear our hands to the bone. And there might be some people that like it. Your wife might love it. We have stuff. We have things. But you wear your hands to the bone. Your kids may love it. We have things. No other kid has these things. But but are you taking dominion or having dominion where Christ has called you to take dominion? Well, if you don't understand his love, you don't know where you're to operate. That's the most awesome thing about the Lord is when you... when, when Maddie's saying it today, when you understand his love, you gave him the capacity to walk into the room, and now you'll actually listen. And these talks with dad are not a beat down anymore. They're a lift up. You care enough about me, Lord, to say that? Vital men have dominion, and that dominion is authorized by the one who created them and loved them. Then God blessed them, Genesis 1, and said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, have dominion. Have dominion over what? It talks about the fish, it talks about the bird, and then it talks about all the other things that creep, creepeth, or walk around on the earth. Vital men have dominion, and that dominion is authorized out of love. Now, I, I want to define that and reel that in just a little bit, because some Men don't understand it, and we need a biblical perspective of this. To have dominion means to have rule. Some of you are going to get a little bit scared on this, but I want you to understand. How many of you know God doesn't do anything scary? To have dominion means to dominate, to tread on. That's why when somebody comes into your home and they're not authorized to be in your home, you're going to dominate your territory. Why? They don't have the right. Am I preaching to some men today? You don't just let any guy come walking off the street, walk through your home, walk and get stuff out of your refrigerator, walk into your kid's room. Some of you got some houses. Walk into your man cave, have your remote. You would walk in the house and say, sir, what are you doing? Some of you wouldn't say, sir. (laughs) 
Some of you got some things to back that up. And it's not kids named Smith and Wesson. I want you to know, sir, today there is a big difference between taking and having. Scripture does not lay out the terms that you are to take dominion and take dominion. And that's why there are so many men that are exhausted today. And some will never live out a vital man role. Because they are taking dominion instead of understanding, wait a minute, you already have it. God gave it to you. You're exhausted taking and taking and taking. You don't have to take dominion over your family. They're part of the creeping thing. You have dominion over your family. As a man of God, come on, guys. You have dominion. It is not my responsibility or any other male in this church's responsibility to walk into your home and teach your kids the ways of Christ. When you walk into the church, you're going to get that. It's my responsibility, even as a pastor, to navigate the times with my kids, to to be the preacher to my family. How will they know without a preacher? So so you gotta you gotta understand that that in those areas and in those boundaries, wait a minute, God, I have dominion. I've got to start living. Like I have dominion, I don't have to go to men's conference and come home and figure out how to take dominion when I already have it. I just have to exercise out of the freedom of God's love for me. And when I say to a loving God, Lord, Lord, I've been trying to take dominion, and you said I could have dominion. I want to relinquish taking dominion because I have dominion. And Lord, Lord, I don't know how. God's not surprised. God doesn't say, okay, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to find a man that will stop trying to take it and he will just walk into having it. God's going to say this, then I'll help you. God will help every man in this house that wants help. It doesn't matter how behind you feel. It doesn't matter if you look at your kids and they're like decades old now. And and pastor, I don't know how. That's why the spirit of God will infuse you and help you and speak through you. How many of you know we learned last week the Holy Spirit, God, the Trinity can expedite some things in you if you're open to it. It means dominion, to rule, to dominate, to tread down. There's a difference, a big difference in taking and having. And and that's what the rendering is. It's you have dominion. God says, Brian, I authorize this for you. you. You have jurisdiction here. You can move into what is yours. I have set this up for you, not based on how good you are, Based on my love for you, everything changes when you know you're loved. Truly, everything changes when you know you're loved. And the only one that will never, ever, 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 ever break your heart is God. Your wife will let you down. Your husband will let you down. Every relationship at some point will let you down. You've met them before, little googly-eyed honeymooners. We just love each other. We never fight. It's amazing. You're thinking it is amazing. It's amazing. (laughs) That's amazing that you never fight. Can I say this in love? And I'm not saying this, understand the boundaries of this. But your best people to take marriage advice from is not people in their 20s and 30s. And I'm not saying God can't do something significant and you can have have a wonderful marriage. Give me some folk that have weathered the storm. You wouldn't go to a 21-year-old and say, can you show me how to invest my millions? Most of you. Well, this guy was just kind of an overnight success. He was a risk taker. And all of a sudden, you'd be like, that's the last guy I want to talk to. 
give me some people, can I say it this way? Give me some silver hair that have navigated the journey long enough to have something to say. So when it comes to spiritual things, how much would we learn if we would just sit down with people that have been there, walked through some stuff, took some hits, tried to work through weeks and months of years of taking dominion instead of having dominion. Sir, I want you to know it's not your grit and determination that makes God love you or that makes you a successful man. It's his blessing on you because he created you to be what he created you and he loves you and he wants a relationship with you. Stop pushing back a God and vital men that are trying to get into your world to help build you up in the things of Christ. There should not be a man in this room that does not have another man helping him. Talking through junk. Talking through stuff. Talking through blind sides. Talking through ways the enemy moves in. Vital men in our life that we open our heart to. It's not my grit and determination and hard work. It's a blessing from a God that created me and had a plan for my life. When man understands this, that God loves him and God has set him up for success, then he moves into this time of having dominion in a jurisdiction that God has given him and there is no confusion. Judges 5.13 speaks to this. Judges 5.13, it says, then he made him that remain, th then he made him that remaineth have dominion, look at this, over the nobles, him that remaineth have dominion. He didn't say you're going to go take dominion. He said he made him have dominion over the nobles among the peoples. The Lord God, the Lord made me have dominion over the mighty. Have you ever been, been plucked up at work? You don't have the tenure. You don't feel that you have the experience. You still feel green in areas. And all of a sudden, the owner or the manager calls you in and says, we have a different role we would like for you to step into. Why? Because it is those places the Lord says you will have dominion. I will put you in places that do not make sense for you. What, do, what will we normally do? We'll try to kick the door down, showing them we might not be the brightest, but we're better than him. We might not have tenure, but her... So we'll try to take dominion by coming up with our own thing. And then you know what? Sometimes we get the job and we're there for a year. And it was the most miserable year for our life. Because instead of having dominion where God called you to be, you took dominion on, dominion on your own accord. Sometimes we call these people movers and shakers. Folks, I'll tell you this. Unless the spirit is moving and shaking me, I just want to go ahead and sit still until he shows me what direction to walk in. I don't know about you, but BK has messed some junk up. Because I wanted to do it the way I wanted to do it. Has anybody else in the church been there? Sometimes it can be rough and awkward when a man tries to take dominion, but when you have it, something changes. Vital men, you have Dominion. I, I want to say this. Vital men, you have dominion over your house. Who's thankful for your queen and your kids? Amen. Come on, men. Who's thankful for your queen and your kids? Amen. So you never have to walk into somebody else's jurisdiction and try to take dominion. Because you don't have dominion where you take it. You have dominion where you have it. God granted this to me. So we stay in our space, we stay in our lane. Vital men reproduce, they produce again. Vital men reproduce vital outcomes. I want to position it this way, and it's going to take some... We have any manly men in the room today? I got to know, yeah, so we've got one. We do. Well, over here. I heard it over here. We have too many men today that should be grown up in God, vital men. 
stuck with Peter Pan syndrome. You say, wow, that sounds serious. How do you catch it? I don't know. But I know men get it. You remember Peter Pan, a play that was written early 1900s about a character that calls out to Wendy and her brothers, calls them off to the make-believe Neverland. They encounter ridiculous adventures along the way. Pirates, Captain Hook. Wendy takes on this motherly role because nobody really that they're around in Neverland, the space between the, the occupied area, the jurisdiction, no one seemed to be responsible. So Wendy became that. She began feeding these lost boys, her siblings. She began teaching them. She began mothering them. They, they slip through an open crack in the window, and they fly off with Peter Pan and Tinkerbell. They had to be sprinkled with what church, first church? A little pixie dust. Some of you have seen it. <laughs> and Wendy decides at one point, at one moment, I'm taking you through this play, this story quickly, that the responsible thing to do is to just go home. Her parents will await her. She sees the story in her head. And upon their return, as they're, as they're going home and just going back to that place of comfort, going to that place of accountability, they face opposition by the pirates, by Captain Hook, and Peter Pan runs in as a hero. And again, he saves the day. All of these evil men, but Peter Pan can help you. Peter Pan can save the day. Wendy, her siblings, and the lost boys are now returning home, and she pleads with Peter Pan, just come join us. Leave Neverland. However, he was stuck with the syndrome. The Peter Pan syndrome. A boy who chose never to grow up. Well, later we see in the return of the story different variations of this, but we'll see later a Peter Pan that has returned and has seen a Wendy that has grown up come into a responsible person only to whisk away her daughter to the same adventure. Stuck as a boy, watch me, I'll be your hero. Hero of what? Neverland. A make-believe story. He wanted, Peter Pan longed to live a life in make-believe, living out boyish thrills, but never submitting to the process of being a man. Sir, I want to tell you something. You might have some beautiful young daughters, and I'm thankful that you do. But no one can teach a man to be a man. Listen to me this morning but a man who thinks different, talks different, dresses different, smells different. Some of the most interesting things you see is a mother whose mate walked out on her. And she said, I did everything I could as a woman, but I had to connect the boy to another man in the community that could teach him to be a man. P Peter Pan never became a vital man. He spent his time fighting as a hero in a world that did not exist, a place where he would take dominion of Neverland, but he never had dominion of Neverland. Fancied by a fairy tale, trapped in the imagination of what he thought Life was a boy that refused to grow up. I end with this thought today. I want to read 1 Corinthians 13, 11. But I want to preface that by saying this. Vital men 
Godly men, vital men, they offer boys tickets out of Neverland. But look at this plan that I have. I can this, I can that. Well, not and have a good marriage, you can't. Come out of Neverland. But, but look, 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 look at what I have, sir. Look at what I have, sir. He's talking to the gray hair right now. I can amass this, and then I can this, and then we can this, and then we can this, and then we can this, and then, oh, hold, hold on, son. Think not about tomorrow, because tomorrow has worries of its own. Consider today. What will you do today to become a vital man? I love 1 Corinthians 13, verse 11. I don't know a man in here that it has not challenged. If it has not challenged you, please come talk to me because we probably need you to preach at some point. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, did anybody get that? When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, look at me, guys. Something shifted in the writer when he became a man. You say, Pastor, what was it? Well, when he was a child, he spake as a child. He understood as a child. He thought as a child. But when I became a man, something shifted. What shifted? I put away childish things. Man, I want to encourage you with the challenge today in your pursuit to be a vital man. What childish way do you need to pull out of your routine? Say, Lord, I give it to you today. Man, what fairy tale do you need to give up? This never land story, which is quite possibly only the Holy Spirit can show you is not a jurisdiction the Lord would have. You have dominion. I mean, you could take dominion of it, but you've taken dominion before. How and what is your process into growing into a vital man? What area in your life do you need to say? And, and I join you in this today. What area do you need to say, God? Make this boy, make this boy a man. Make this boy, that childish way, that childish thought, those childish processes, make me a man today. You know, men, we are offered, all of us are, this fairy tale story, a life lived outside of what God calls us to be. But like, Pastor Corey sitting in his office looking to the over across the street to that old hotel in South Chicago. I say this, enough is enough. Today is the moment that it can shift and today's the moment that it can change. I want every man in this house to know this. You were created in the image of God. Amen, ladies? You were created in the image of God. You have greatness with God written all over your life. You were put here for a purpose. You have dominion, places that he expects for you to walk on that are yours. Your grit and determination, your strength, it's not enough. It's yielding to what he has, which is your greatest asset. You're not in a fairy tale. The stakes are high. You've got kids that you're taking into a future, hopefully in eternity, with Jesus Christ. You're called to help others get a one-way ticket out of Neverland. Offering a way out of that false life God never intended others to have. Vital men, you are a model to follow. I want to give you a few of those things in this model. Vital men are humble. They're not proud. And the church shouted amen. amen. They're patient. They're not rushed. They're fruitful. It's not forced. They have dominion. 
They're not taking it. Vital men have a God that they serve, and they have a Joe. They have a person that they could sit down with and share their heartache. They have a person that they can sit down with and talk about the joys of life and the defeats of life. But they always submit to a heavenly father that loves them and they dive into the depth of that love no matter how old they are. I want to challenge you with this. Some of these things I can wrap up here, but this is something that I felt that the Holy Spirit gave me and I don't want to depart from the sanctuary of God without saying it. Young men, older men, God did not bring you to this planet to find a hobby. God brought you to this planet to give you a purpose. You're called to shake the world. And every time that little shaking starts, you start talking yourself off the hill. You mean me, God? Just like Jonah. You mean me, God? Just like Saul. You mean me, God? Just like Adam. We could attach it to anything. The prophetess, the prophet, the deacons of the church, the elders, the flock. God has called us to be vital men, and I want to attach to that today as I'm closing. God has called mankind to be vital, to live for him. I'm going to ask if you would, those in the room today, those men, men in the room today that are 18 and above, I want you to quickly stand to your feet, if you will. Just 18 and above. Say, so what is it going to do next? Pray over you. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to pray over you. I want to invite you this morning, if you will, just to lift both hands up and surrender just before the Lord. You say, Brian, I can't do that. That's fine. Lord, I thank you that you had a plan and a purpose to create these guys as male. And I thank you, Lord, that you brought them to and through a season of boyishness, just doing, Lord, goofy things, testing the envelope. But I thank you today that we can relinquish those boyish tactics that worked, they manipulated for a season. But I thank you that today, real grown men can say, I'm done with it, Lord. I am a vital man. There's somebody else that needs to see the model, and it needs to kick in now. There's somebody else that is hurting, and I need to walk them through elements of my pain. There's someone else that is lost, and God, we got to show somebody else the way. So in this room today, I pray that you would empower a great group of men to know you more, to press into you more often. God, I pray this, that we would consider more taking you out on our hobbies alone so you can show us our purpose. I pray most importantly that we would just dive in to your love and realize that within that love, you have told us as men have dominion over the things that I have given you. May we always look to you as the source of our strength. May our eyes be enlightened. If we're away from you, may we find you. But help us to be the men that you've called us to be in Jesus' name. And every man in the house shouted amen. Every.